Welcome. This lesson is about bending notes on guitar, and I'm going to give you my top five string bending tips. Taking these five things into account is what makes someone's playing sound professional and confident when bending notes on guitar. If you work on even one of these five string bending tips, if it's something you haven't been doing already, I think you'll hear a big difference. So let's go through them. All right, tip number one, support your bend. So you wanna support your bend with any number of fingers if you can. And you can bend with just one finger, but wherever possible, I want you to support your bend with as many fingers fit in that position. So if I'm playing in this very typical pentatonic shape or whatever scale position you're in, if I'm gonna bend with my pinky, I'm gonna support with all the other fingers, so four fingers. If I'm gonna bend with my third finger, then I'm gonna support with my other two fingers, fingers one and two. If I'm gonna bend with my second finger, then I'm gonna support with my first finger. And then yes, I can bend, sometimes can bend up a whole step, but with one finger up a half step. So you got. Tip number two, have a starting pitch. So you wanna let your initial pitch sound before starting to bend. So the mistake that often happens here is that someone will start bending as they pluck the string or slightly before even they pluck the string. And the result is that that makes it sound like a bend is coming from an out of tune note. So you wanna bend from an initial pitch that is in tune. And a great way to practice this that sounds great is by initiating your bend very slowly. So you'll get a really original note here. And then bending. And then even faster bends. You always want to make sure you have this tiny, tiny moment of the original pitch before starting to bend. Tip number three, stop at the peak. So stop the sound at the peak of the bend. As a default rule, you don't wanna hear the pitch slipping back down. It doesn't, it doesn't sound tight, it doesn't sound strong, it doesn't sound intentional. You want the pitch to be stopped by muting it with your right hand at the peak pitch of the bend. And you can hold the bend at the peak, you just wanna stop it before it comes back down at all. So any amount of it coming back down will weaken the overall effect of the bend. Check out how all these bends, none of them are coming down. Even with two notes at a time. Even tiny bends. Here's a couple examples from Stevie Ray Vaughan's solo on Mary Had a Little Lamb. That's a little lick he plays. Bend, stopping at the peak. Okay, another spot. That's the spot I want you to listen for. It's very quick. All those bends, none of them come down. No matter how far you're bending, stop it at the peak. This sounds great if you're doing a full step bend, a half step bend, or even a quarter step bend. So even a tiny little bend. Don't want to hear it come down. Or a full. This is one of the secrets to, to bending, really getting that going. So there are techniques where you can intentionally bring a bend down. Of course, it, it happens all the time uh, when it's controlled and when it's on purpose, that's fine. But other than that, by default, have your bends always stop at the peak. And this is what makes it sound clean and tight and gives it attitude. So an example of a bend coming down on the guitar solo for Let It Be by the Beatles. So what happened there was actually that the bend was the equivalent of stopped at the peak, but re-plucked. So plucked at the peak and, and came back down. So that same spot where I would have stopped it, it was actually replayed as an intentional down bend. So... Okay, so this is usually done when letting a bend come down on purpose. They'll start with the bend up and pluck it at the peak and bend down. So sometimes that's connecting from an up bend, but sometimes just totally on its own. Okay, tip number four, intonate the bend. So especially for whole step bends or any bend where you are sustaining a pitch for any amount of time, you want a bend that is intonated. You wanna keep intonation in mind. So getting an intentional 
pitch that you're arriving at. This is very hard on the guitar because it's one of the few times that we have to listen for intonation since we usually don't have to because of our frets. So this is also why it's so good to practice because it's also great for our ears. So to work on this, a great exercise is to slide up to the note you want to bend and then bend up to it and alternate back and forth until you feel like you're in control of hitting that exact pitch with your bend. Okay, here's an example. All right, and tip number five, you want to hook the next string that's next to your bend. You want to hook that under your fingertips. So you hook the adjacent string to your fingertip. Uh, that's a little hard to describe. I'll show you a picture here in a second. This is no a notorious problem with bending, especially when trying to hold and sustain bends or do bending vibrato, that the strings start to slip away from your fingers. So if the string you push against next to the one you're bending slips between your finger and the fretboard, the pressure is too much and it pushes the note that you're actually trying to bend down. And we already know we don't want to hear that note slip down. That makes it sound sloppy. We want to keep it at the peak of the bend and stop it there unless we're intentionally bending down. The solution is that the neighboring string should catch onto your fingertip and pull the string away from the fretboard as you bend. So check out this photo here. I just took a close up of it. So you see how the strings are hooked onto the actual fingertip and pulling away from the fretboard, keeping it from slipping between the finger and the fretboard. So that's what allows us to keep that grip on it and have it not slip away. It also allows us to do a little bit of vibration bending vibrato by pushing up against that string or almost like holding the weight of the guitar on that string and kind of pushing against it so this way the other string is getting pushed up and out of the way not slipping between your fingers it's not pulling pressure back down and thus preventing the grip from slipping that's it those are the five tips for bending notes on guitar and i hope it helps and if you also want your solos to sound more interesting and more melodic without just sounding like scales i have something super cool for you that will help with that and this is a really great supplement for working on bending at the same time. So what it is, is just a simple exercise sheet of the top three pentatonic scale melodic patterns for improvising on guitar. And this is exactly the solution to sounding more melodic when improvising instead of just going up and down scales and would be great to work on it and throwing bends in the mix as well. It's really fun stuff to practice and makes a big difference when working on soloing and improvising. So you can grab it at going to my website, soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. That's number three patterns. Or you can click on the link in the description. I have a video that goes along with that too. So the link will be down there as well. Thanks a bunch. Happy bending. And I'll see you in another lesson soon.